Welcome to this video. Here, you're going to learn how to visualize TigerGraph's COVID-19 starter kit using Plotly Dash and create a cool dashboard on top of it. So let's get started. The first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to hip install Plotly with the upgrade. Then it'll automatically restart the kernel if you run this. Uh, and we need to do this so that way we can use the multiple line graphs later on. Okay, now that we got that over with, first thing we need to do is we're going to create our solution on TigerGraph Cloud. To do this, navigate to tgcloud.io, hit login slash register, go to my solutions, click create solution. And we'll be using the COVID-19 analysis v3.1.1. Next. Next. Awesome. So once you type in everything, you should be able to see that you're using the COVID-19 starter kit. And then uh, keep note of your subdomain as well as your password. Then hit submit and give it a few minutes to start. And I will cut to when it is ready. So I'll see you there. Awesome. So once your status is ready, you can click the four squares and then hit Graph Studio. Now in Graph Studio, we're going to do two things. We're going to need to load our data and then we'll install our queries. So in load data, we can select all of our all the CSVs. And press the play button to load. Then in write queries. Now we're not going to use all of the queries, but we'll install all of them just in case you want to continue to choose an exploration and you want to use some of these queries. So to do that, just press that button and install. Then I will cut to when everything is installed and upserted. So now all of our GSQL queries are installed. You can tell that by the arrow pointing up and all of the data is loaded. So now we can go back to the Colab notebook. The first thing you're going to want to do is connect your Tiger Graph solution. So to do this, we'll pip install PyTigerGraph, which is the Python library to interact with your Tiger Graph solution. Now here, we're importing PyTigerGraph as CG, then replace this with your subdomain and this with your password. So for me, that'd be COVID-19Graph as my subdomain and my password is TigerGraph. Next, verify that you're connected to the solution using con.gsql.ls. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write additional queries on top of what we've already installed. So we're first going to run uh, grab infection location details. So what this will do is that it'll look at all the locations where there were an infection case, and then it'll grab the latitude, longitude, infection case, the province, the number of confirmed cases, the population and area. We'll be able to use this with our map visualizations. After that, we're going to run a really simple query, which is get search stats. This will simply return all of the search stats vertices in our graph. Then finally, we're going to run patient travel locations. And what this will do is it'll grab all of the places where a patient has traveled, given input of a certain patient. And so we'll give that a few minutes to run. Fantastic. Now that all of our queries are installed, let's get to the dashboard. We finished everything on the Tiger Graph side for now. We'll call our Tiger Graph queries in our dashboard. So we're going to start off with Plotly Dash. First step is setup. We're going to pip install 
Jupyter Dash and Dash Bootstrap components. Then we'll import pandas and date time to manage our data. We'll also have Plotly Express. Then we'll grab all of the Dash libraries. Next, we're going to set up some constants, which will be the colors that we'll use, some style, then logo and font. Next, we'll set up the sidebar. So sidebar right now consists of description of what this is, just the COVID-19 starter kit. Three tabs, which will be important. Those will be the three tabs we'll use and the Tiger Graph logo, along with the link to Tiger Graph Cloud. Next, we'll create the general page. So first off, we're going to run H distribution, which is one of the queries which comes with the Tiger Graph starter kit. Then we'll also run get search stats, which was one that we wrote ourselves. We'll change these into data frames, then we'll get into the content of the page itself. It starts off like all of our pages with a header. Then it has four cards on the top detailing different aspects of this. So in this case, it'd just be the number of patients, number of infection cases, number of provinces, and number of travel events. Then it'll have two graphs. One will be a line graph with the search statistics, and the other will be an age distribution using those two queries we created. Next, we'll run the patient search. The patient search is really this giant dynamic page where you can search for patients through multiple means and also get a bunch of visualizations on top of it. So we'll do this by starting off with our header. Then we'll have a card with patient details on it. Next, we have a text input to search. Then we also have a data table. Data tables will be able to give a chart visualization of our data and can also click and interact with it. In this case, it'll show all of the patients which are patients infected. And then you can click on those patients and you can see their dashboard as well. Then finally, we have a patient map of all the places where our patient visited and a patient timeline. Then our last section we'll create is the map section. These will be some interactive maps. Once again, we start off with our header. Then we have a drop down to pick the map type between street, geometric, and density. We create the map itself. Then we pick an accompanying chart type and create the chart itself. Finally, we can start to put it all together. We'll call Jupyter Dash and assign it to be our app. We'll call the functions we just created to create the different content, and then we'll create the layout. Next, we'll run the callbacks. Now, the callbacks is what's going to make our dashboard interactive. The first callback we'll create is going to navigate to different pages based on the tab you click on in the sidebar. The second callback will be for the maps page. So here we'll grab the value of the map type dropdown and we'll create a map based on that. That will also use a second callback, which will be our third callback overall, which will do something similar, but it'll grab from the graph options so for that little visualization chart on the side, and also from the map itself. So we can select data from the map and we can just view those points and I'll update that graph. Then our fourth callback will be for the patient search, which will be the giant interactive page. You can see here that it has multiple outputs and multiple inputs. So some of the outputs would be, it'll update the infected patients table, it'll update the patient card, it'll update the map, which shows where the patient has traveled, it'll update the search value, and it'll update the patient timeline. And as input, you can either input a value 
by searching it using the search bar or by clicking on a cell in the table. And then this will grab the data from the table. And that is our final callback. Finally, we can run this and it'll generate a URL for us to click. And here's our dashboard. So to start off, we have these cards on the top, along with search percentage over the years and age distribution. Search percentage, we can grab a certain section. This is by clicking and dragging, and you can see how each of these are doing stats-wise. So it looks like right now, Cold was having a lot of searches that time of year. It's around May 2018. And COVID, of course, was barely known. Next, we can go to patient search. Now, in patient search, we can either search for a specific patient or you can click on it. So this patient, patient 61000035, uh, infected this patient, was located in these two areas. Then this is their timeline. So looks like they started showing symptoms in 1970, meaning that it was probably well before COVID-19 happened, so they didn't document any symptoms after the fact. Uh, but they were confirmed to have COVID in February 2020. Then once again, we can drag this here. We can see that... They're confirmed to have COVID in February 2020, and they were released in March 2020. And then from March to now, they are good and healthy. Then we can click on here, the next patient. We can see that they were confirmed to have COVID in February, and they were never released. Once again, you can see where they've traveled. Then you can also get some overarching details about them. So they don't have a global number. They were born in 1966. They're female. They don't have a contact number. Disease number isn't mentioned. And uh, their state right now is isolated, which you can see here because uh, they're still in the red. You can also search for different patients. Say we look at patient 80, we can see that patient uh, 80 is released now because they're healthy. Also see the locations they went to and patient 80 did not infect any other patients. Next, we'll go to the infection maps. So here we can pick out of the three map types, street map, geometric and geologic map, and density map. Now let's go to street map. Then you can use either lasso select here or box select to grab certain points and then it'll update this graph here. Now this graph can also be changed with a 3D graph and you can update it live time as well and voila. So that is a walkthrough of this Dash app that we created. So congratulations. If you got through this, you were able to create a dashboard with Plotly Dash using Tiger Graph data to visualize COVID-19 data. If you have any questions or ran into any blockers, you can always ask in the Tiger Graph community page or in the Discord. And finally, if you want to create your own project, definitely go for it. You can share it in the community contribution program. And if you ever ran into any problems or you want to completely restart, you can always uncomment and run this con.gsql drop all. But do know that it's a very dangerous command. So thank you and good luck for your next Tidygraph project.